Welcome back to Team O'Neill. I'm Chris. I'm Ryan from Thompson Racing Fabrication. And we're here today to discuss roll cage safety and design. So please join us for our new video series. All right, so for this video, what we wanted to do is take a car that was a home-built rally cage that is a logbook car, and at Ryan, as an expert tech inspector, so see what you see and get your input. And really, like we said, this is a legal car, so just ways that you might make a change or something you would do differently, um, just so that we can give the, our audience some real-world perspective on what is something that passes and what is something that you, know, you could push to make a little bit better. So. Sounds good. All right, so let's take a look over here. All right, so what, what we're looking at here, we talked earlier in the other video about nodes, right? Yep. So I can already see, a look, look from what I can see, the nodes are not all together on this. Yeah, your A-pillar a tube comes down and lands only on the door bar. So if this gets loaded, it's just going to shear the door bar right off of the A-pillar tube. They don't have a node. It's really not a very strong construction. But from a technical, it does pass tech. Yeah. Yeah. The requirement is within within a given distance, 100 millimeters of the base plate, and they, they certainly are compliant, but okay. uh, maybe not quite ideal. The other thing I see from here is it looks like this is fairly far back. And it is fairly far Most other cages yes. that I've seen, it's usually a lot more forward. Yep. This is probably easier from a home built design. Yeah, it's 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 easier to access to weld. It's easier to bend. Um, so yeah, they were just simply shortcutting to try to get the job done. Okay, and what's below this? This looks also different than what I'm used to seeing. Yep, these are uh, it's a uh, called a plinth block. Uh, the base plates they are approvable. Uh, it is a bit like a cookie cutter, if you will. It's just a hollow box. It doesn't have the same amount of uh, area of engagement into the chassis. So from a theoretical standpoint, it's not quite as strong. It's, it's just an easier path to getting, to getting to completion, but maybe not ideal. Hmm. Anything else that you see in the door bar area that you would do differently? This weld right here, it's really cold. Uh, see how the weld is, is piled up? This area here is pretty decent. That's a cold weld. It doesn't have very good penetration. It's not going to be strong. Hmm. And what does that mean? What's a cold weld? Uh, they, they didn't have enough uh, heat built up in the, the machine of the process, or they were moving too fast, or all the above. But it's, uh, it's certainly not, uh, not an ideal weld. So let's move to the back of the car here. So what do you see here in the back? First thing I see, just giant gobs of weld just below your hand there in the uh, the the harness bars where they're meeting the main hoop. Uh, it looks to me like the notches were probably not very precise in that tubing, and they've used weld to fill up the extra the air gap. Uh, you see it also on the the ends where the the harness bars meet the main hoop. Uh, really, you want the yeah. yes the the, the weld the, the intention is that weld is the um, Ad adhesion and what's to hold this together you don't want the weld to be the structure but if you're filling air gaps with large amounts of weld it's really not an ideal uh, configuration hmm. so that's something again this passes the the minimum safety standard but from your f concern uh, it actually isn't adding that strength component and could be a potential failure yes Absolutely. Uh, and, and many cases we're talking about uh, ideal and ultimate strength and ultimate what's best. Uh, this, this complies to the minimum. It certainly would, would pass and would be better than even some rally cages we see racing today. It's not that it's awful. It's just that it could be a lot better. Um, there's some misalignment where you see the, the back stays coming up into the main hoop. Again, we don't have nodes. All the tubes are hitting in their own individual locations. It's easier in process. It's just a single notch. It's a single small weld. And it's either just lack of knowledge or ability is why this came to be. It conforms, but it's from a theoretical standpoint, certainly not the best. And our goal of this, this video is not to really you know, poop on your someone's desire to build a cage this way. Our goal is just to educate the community so that if you do get in a car that you didn't build, you can look at this and go, okay, the, I at least understand the risk that I'm taking and, and just be more educated in that sense. Uh, if you feel comfortable to drive this cage, it is legal and it's something that 
you know, for what, if that's your comfort level, at least you knew the, that that's what your risk you're taking. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I have a model that, that every roll cage that comes out of our shop is the best one we ever built. We want to be our own greatest critic. And even when I'm going through my own cages and we're at completion, we're looking at, could we make this a little bit tighter? Could we make that a little bit better weld? We're testing, we're developing, we're always trying to push our own abilities. And uh, certainly I have the opportunity from time to time to see cages I built 40, 50, 100 cages ago and look at it and wow, you know, I was really proud of that uh, 10 years ago, but I'm doing so much better now. So it's, it's important to, to be uh, a critic of your own work and, and pushing even your own skills and abilities as far as you can. Right. Awesome. Any other thoughts or concerns or anything else you see with this design? Um, one thing I noticed, another thing that I noticed was this, we were talking earlier about uh, the base plate design and being a multi-plane. This is really a single plane uh, base plate. It's also not tied into the suspension. This is just going on with thin piece of sheet metal. Um, so it's, it's vulnerable in if it's hit from the side or um, if this is loaded this way, uh, the only strength that structure we really have here is this, this small thin piece of, of wheelhouse and instead of, it could have been put, even if you just had an, another piece of, of base plate that went up into this body panel here, having metal in shear and not, this is, this is called uh, compression when it gets loaded. It's, it's very easy to just push this down. Whereas if you had uh, engagement in the side, you'd be trying to tear this entire panel it would be much stronger. So again, this is, is perfectly acceptable, but it's definitely not uh, ideal. So one thing this, this cage does do a pretty good job of, Chris, is the general fitment is nice. The main hoop is tight up against the, uh, the structure. Uh, it's pushed outward. Um, the, they did a good job. I have seen in other instances, or for example, this tube here at the windscreen is too far aft. This one could have been pushed forward a little bit, but they, they really did a pretty darn good job. You could have a builder put this tube too far back and it's, it's intrusion in your head. Or uh, like Tim mentioned, sometimes these A-pillar tubes can be projected uh, inward and they start to block visibility. So a lot to be said about fit and finish. Um, and that's an issue you have seen in, in the real world as a tech inspector, like you could build the cage more in, encroaching yep. on that, that compartment. But now you're sacrificing visibility. You are physically putting yourself closer to that metal cage. Um, yep. So that, that another potential trade-off in, in safety. And right. these cages are required to have uh, FIA foam uh, covering yep. the metal tubes once yep. for competition. And that's just in case that tube gets to your body in some sure. sort of compression. And super important to remember when you're looking at the placement of these tubes and how they're put in is, although we're observing it as a static environment right now, in a crash, this is not a static environment. The seats move, the belts stretch, tubing bends. So some people will be going, well, why, why do I have to have tube padding all the way? That's 12 inches from my head. Well, in a crash, that proximity is not, uh, not guaranteed to stay the same. Right. Oh, Ryan, we really appreciate your expertise in this. And I think, you know, getting to see an example of something that does pass, but something that, you know, what you'd like to see better um, or just at least educate our community so that if they do get in a car like this, they just understand that that, that is something that could have been done better. Sure. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, I really hope we can help educate some people and have a safer, better rally in the future. We wanted to wrap up this series with just some general recommendations and things that we have seen and found over the years, thinking about people looking about building a roll cage and, and just the general concept of them being in their race car with their roll cage. But, you know, what are some of the kind of horror stories and things that you've seen and experienced as a, as a builder and uh, just other clients that, that you've interacted with for rally cars? I think the number one thing is vet your builder, get resources, check them out. Uh, I've seen so many people that they, they took a, oh, the guy down the street, he's built six drag racing roll cages and he says he can do my rally car and we end up tearing it out. Uh, we've had some that we've torn out personally because of they're just, they're not meeting the standard. They're not getting log books. Uh, knowing that whoever you're choosing to do it has the experience and knowledge. And it's, it's a pretty simple way to get references, just talking to people, internet research, but be sure you're, it's a big investment in safety, money. Look at who you're choosing. So what do you typically see as, as someone that 
knows a guy down the street that can weld is like what is that what you're seeing like what's the what are the issues that you've seen those often end in a disaster uh they yeah i i, get, I paid this guy pizza and beer and he's building a roll cage you know is it great um probably not what you're looking for you're going to end up with challenges getting log books or passing tech and ultimately being far less safe logistics becomes a factor uh, I've always found it very interesting that we get inquiries from people uh, being a national shop we'll get people call from a few states away and oh man you're you're 400 miles away but then I found it uh, strikingly surprising like well, won't you drive 400 miles to go to a race yeah I guess I guess I would well why wouldn't you drive 400 miles for a quality installer who's going to to build you a good safety structure that could save your life and it's usually like oh yeah that is Maybe I should go to, to you or, or any other you know, qualified and talented builder. So why, why would you cut yourself short and try to use the guy down the street? And usually you know, the Raleigh cage is one of the big first steps, right? And so people sometimes forget the, once they get this all done, what they're end up going to be doing. And maybe they don't have the trailer yet or whatever infrastructure they might need. But that's something that uh, it, it is a little bit, you know, just perspective sometimes sure. trying to think of. Yeah, I hope I can remind people here that like the importance and the value of, of getting a, a good builder and the risk of not using a good builder. Uh, we've got documents and pictures and pages and experience of, of tearing out roll cages or having disappointed people at tech. Uh, there's really a lot of value in your life and, and the ability to rally and doing it the right way. And it's, you know, really it does come back to the minimum safety standards that the series is set, but you know, nobody wants to have a bigger issue, right? And that's ultimately what we've seen. And, you know, we actually had a year, a really tough year this past year, um, but all the facts that we have available to us, roll cage design was not the failure. Roll cage installation was not the failure, the right. reason that we've had some of these fatalities this last year. Yep. Um, so. We're proud of the series and our, our safety standards in that perspective, um, but you know, we're always trying to find ways to be safer. So this is not a, an area we're willing to negotiate, right? Right. It's, uh, there's enough things that happen that uh, we need to ensure that you have that minimum safety standard. Yeah, it's important to know that it, it's that, it's a minimum safety standard. And that's what the series, ARA, NHRA, SCCA, they're all setting a standard minimum. Everyone is free, except in some small extreme circumstances. You can always do better, and we'll hope that we'll give some guidance here that lets you choose better, choose what's right for you, and understand those those nuances that can make a better outcome, a safer outcome. So that's the goal of this series, and hopefully you guys had a chance to watch all the rest of our videos. So if you guys have any questions or concerns or have any thoughts, please add them to the comment section. Ryan, if they do want to come get a hold of you and get a roll cage, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? By email, at ryan at leonalcars.com. So uh, we look forward to, uh, if you guys have any other thoughts, want more videos or content from us, uh, please let us know and, and we'll put out some more content. Hopefully we'll see you on the rally stages, if not sooner than later. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.